Next question. What is the impact on uh, the Chinese social media if Western social media platforms would be allowed to access China? So basically, this is, for instance, if what would happen if Facebook would be allowed back into China? Um, have a look at this picture. This is Mark Zuckerberg. You probably don't know this guy. His father-in-law. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> yeah. No, this is, uh, this is Lu Wei. And Lu Wei was sort of the head of internet business in, in China. So this, this was the guy in charge of the Great Firewall at this point. This meeting took place in the office of Facebook. And this is the desk of Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg had invited, because Mark Zuckerberg really wants to get back into China, he had invited the, the chief of internet from uh, China to visit Facebook and to maybe have a discussion. Is, is there anything you see at his desk or on his desk which strikes you as... It's a bit difficult to see, maybe. But. The books. The president's picture, Chinese president books. This is the book, uh, the published book, which was translated into English as well, of the speeches of Xi Jinping next to his keyboard. And when Lu Wei said, oh, hey, you've, you've got the book of all the speeches of Xi Jinping. He said, yeah, I give him a copy to all of my employees here at Facebook. They're all reading it. You remember, you recognize this thing? It's a mascot. It's a cuddly toy. And it's the uh, part of the logo of Xiaomi, the mobile phone. And it's like a little soldier bunny rabbit. So he put a cuddly toy of Xiaomi on his desk and he put the speeches of Xi Jinping on his desk when the internet tsar of, uh, of China was visiting. And of course, a lot of people criticized him for, uh, for this behavior. He was criticized not, not for, for meeting this guy, but <laughs> like strategically placing some very iconic Chinese things on his desk. So what, what would happen if Facebook would get, for instance, Facebook or Twitter or YouTube would get back into China? I think the impact is going to be very limited. And the reasons are that Chinese social media, as you've probably already seen, are much more advanced than, uh, than Western social media. The functionality is, is much greater. The, the, the ease and the integration with, uh, with life is much bigger. The localization of content is, of course, missing. Like uh, last week, we discussed e-commerce. And we came to the conclusion one of the big problems with eBay is that they didn't localize very well. That the same goes for, for Facebook and, and Twitter and, and YouTube. And relatively few Chinese people have good English skills. Some of these platforms are also available in Chinese. But basically, they, why would you go to a second-rate platform if you've got something much better already? So, in other words, Western social media are really no match anymore for Chinese social media. People would try it out out of curiosity. If this would happen, if Facebook would come back to China, it would only be if they would put their servers to, for China in China and they would censor their content. So what's, what extra would you have as a Chinese uh, online person? Only 4% of the Chinese people are actually using a VPN at the moment. So only 4% of all of the online people take the effort to actually get over the Great Firewall and only a fraction of that frequently use Facebook. Most of them that you do use Facebook do so because they have friends in Western countries, because, for instance, they studied in the UK or they studied in, uh, in the US. But most of the Chinese people don't have that many Western friends. So my theory is that if all of these platforms would censor their content and would go back into China, it would not be successful at all. What about LinkedIn? That's the same situation, right? Well, li LinkedIn, LinkedIn has censored their content. So li LinkedIn has agreed to the rules that apply within China. But there wasn't a very big website like LinkedIn. Chinese people use social connections, Guanxi, much more than go and put your, your resume on a, on a website. So that was relatively new. And there, there are uh, some people that are using LinkedIn now. It's not extremely popular in China. It's mostly popular in China with Chinese people that want to work for an international company, for instance. So it's like accessible. It is accessible, yeah. But if you would post something to a Chinese contact about Tiananmen Square massacre, yeah, it would get censored. That so would get taken down. Yeah. So 
the Chinese, the Chinese people that access the Chinese version of the website have a censored version. Now, the, the management of LinkedIn basically said, so do we want, because Google said we never be evil or something is like, like their, uh, their statement. And, but LinkedIn said, it's not all that relevant for our website because it's more about jobs. And uh, so they agreed to do that. 